Hey, it's Neil Parfit here. Welcome to video number 15 of getting started with the ER301 sound computer. Today I thought I'd go over just a little thing using the sample player and the sample looper together. So let's do that. I'll show you what I'm up to. Um, I'm just going to pick channel 4, just arbitrarily. I'm going to insert a sample player and I'm just gonna load up a file. So I'm gonna go assign sample and I'm gonna load a sample into the sample pool. And I'm just gonna navigate through my card here. And here it is. So I'll grab this. So it's loading into the pool and I'm gonna hit enter. So now it's assigned to the sample player. And what I'm going to do, just so you can hear this, I'm going to, my my audio output is actually is, is wired from channel one, but just to show you, I can actually go and tap off output number four, and it will take this, feed it back into here. I just, I just, I'm just doing this so you can hear it. Um, so I'm going to bring this up to speed. Contrabass bass saxophone. Most people don't even know they exist. I've even had people tell me they don't. I know the truth. <laughs> so I found this clip on YouTube. Okay, so on my channel one, I'm gonna insert a looper. <laughs> this clip is pretty funny. Uh, I'm gonna assign it a, a buffer. And I'm not going to use this file. I'm going to create a new buffer. People don't even know they exist. Let's make it uh, 70 milliseconds. I know the truth. This is an example. Enter. So it's a 13 kilobyte file. And engage the looper. And if I punch it in, now the looper is continuously running and recording this audio from number four. So if I decided to punch out, we have our buffer just looping endlessly. I've even had people tell me that I know. So it's sort of like a freezer at this point, just running free. So check this out. So here's our looper. It's, it's constantly recording really fast. I'm gonna insert a sample player after this and notice it's cut our audio out because there's no input into the sample player. The only sound comes out of the sample player from a loaded sample. But the interesting thing is, if we go to assign a sample, we can assign it the exact same buffer file that the looper is writing to. And if I bring this up to speed. It will sound exactly the same because this sample player is literally tapping off the file that this, this looper is writing to. So how this gets interesting now is if I assign this sample player example a volt per octave source like the keyboard on my KB37 most people don't even know they exist. And I believe that's I uh, A1. Don't. Check that out. It's sort of like a, a poor man's pitch shifter. <laughs> but how this gets interesting is, if I punch out of this looper now, I can basically like sample something on the fly, sort of freeze it, and then that's my uh, oscillator tone. And if I had set the buffer a little bit shorter, like maybe 40 milliseconds, the uh, looping wouldn't be as noticeable.
but you can start getting some pretty erratic results. Like I could go to the speed control, could slow it down. Um, I don't even know they exist. I've even had people tell me they don't. I could have a sine wave control this. Hold on a second. <laughs> so it sort of sounds like a like an underwater sort of gurgling. <laughs> That's kind of bad. It's funny. Contrabass saxophone. But there you go. So just a a simple way to share even had a buffer to grab some new sounds. That's, and I can actually add a fade here so it's a bit smoother. <laughs> and and then I could go in here, I could adjust the speed again. Add some uh, portamento from my keyboard. <laughs> and there you go. That's just uh, just another way to manipulate some sound. And uh, this thing I have on channel four, that could actually be an external audio source. I just uh, decided to use a sample player just so I had some continuous audio playing. Uh, anyway, hopefully that uh, sparks some ideas. Okay, take it easy.